Good morning, Emmanuel. Stephen and we're here again and um, looking at two John, a little smaller book, so hopefully a little smaller devotion this morning. You never know, it might be possible. Um, uh, this is an interesting letter again, Apostle John um, being asked to just bring some correctional um, teaching to a church and Again, just drawing people back to the truth. He talks about truth and love all the time through this very small letter. Um, and I, I used to, I've heard this story, I'm sure it, it, whether it's an urban myth or Christian myth, but um, that John obviously died in old age and even at the end they used to wheel him in. Obviously there was the anointing of the apostle, but they would wheel him in. He couldn't walk and he would just get at the front and basically he would just say to people, love one another and I suppose at that point the Holy Spirit would come and enable people to love one another that there probably would have been moments of repentance and um, people uh, weeping and and um, and then looking to go to one another and encouraging one another and loving one another spring singing spiritual songs there probably was spontaneous worship and glory you know but it all began with him just getting up there and going love one another and I'm sure people looking in those eyes that had seen Jesus and hearing his voice of deep love that's come from this deep well of love having been with Jesus you know that God came and so when he said love one another in truth God did things <laughs> but again this is what he's sort of saying here again is that um, love but then saying, I suppose a correction here is, why aren't you loving one another? Because you have been deceived. Um, I don't know about you, but that sounds just like the whole story of the Bible. God made man and said, go and love my creation and steward it and care for it well and have children and go forth and multiply and have many children and love them and care for them and love one another. The first children didn't love one another. They got jealous for one another. This liar came in and said, well, I think God loves him more than you and I don't think he likes your worship and this guy's taking the mick out of you. And jealousy and greed and competition and, and um, hate and then retribution and um, revenge came in to the people of God. Um, there was pecking order and fighting for position and and then God brought the flood, said, I can't, you can't do this. You're not being my people. And it feels like in the early church, even with all the power of the Holy Spirit coming on people and, and, and the men who knew Jesus teaching, this is how to do this. Even so, the deceiver gets in, false teaching gets in and people start not loving one another not having the right motives of love. And John has to bring correction. Be careful. Know why you love one another. Know how much you are loved. Know the power of forgiveness. Work these things out with one another. Remember that the Lord Jesus so loved you. He came for you that you might have this righteousness, have this unity. Again, it's wherever the Holy Spirit dwells amongst you, you there must be unity. And... We should fight for it. We should fight for our love for one another. Fight um, where we feel like even in this last season, people have offended us, betrayed us, let us down, not been who we thought they would be. The way of the gospel of mercy and grace is to forgive. To love costly, even when they've hurt us badly. Is forgiveness. Otherwise, bitterness comes in, anger, jealousy, malice. And that's not good for them, but it's really bad for us and for our sense of the love of God over our life. So this is quite serious. This is a big teaching in a very small book. And, and in a sense, we only know whether we're getting it right or wrong, essentially when we receive the Holy Spirit when God comes and shows us what's really in our heart. You know, when a brother or sister takes some things from us, or we've lost some things, or they say no to us, 
What blows up at that moment? Is it love or is it other stuff? Maybe we're holding on to things or we're protecting things we shouldn't be protecting. All those things can happen. But ultimately, the solution is Jesus, his blood, his water and his spirit. And so wherever you're at today, whether there are people you're finding it very hard to love today, can I pray for you? Lord, we thank you. Again, as John says, I can say these things, but I really need to be with you. I need to pray with you. I need you to know my love in person. It's been so hard not to know each other in person. Again, for those who are still trying to connect through these screens, bless you. Um, I hope you know our love, that you are loved, and particularly that you are loved by this wonderful God. And Lord, I pray may that real this morning. Holy Spirit, would you come upon anyone who hears this message today? Would you soften their hearts? Where there is anger, frustration, bitterness with others, Lord, would you soften it and would you be able to release it? Would they be able to forgive those that have hurt them in this last season? Would they come back to a saving, loving relationship with those around them? Would they know the grace and mercy and the love of Jesus Christ in their hearts and then therefore their hearts for one another? Lord, would you regather us in unity and love? Would we again worship together as brothers and sisters in love and in unity, enjoying your Holy Spirit? Lord, I pray, even as we gather Sunday by Sunday or in our smaller gatherings, Lord God, that you would fill those gatherings with your Holy Spirit, that the, the liberty would come from that, that there would be much forgiveness, much love extended, much encouragement in whatever way we can, much hugging or just even gentle nodding or whatever floats our boats but knows I'm known and I'm loved. Lord, we pray, draw your people back together to experience this great love, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.